Good evening and welcome to a new edition of To The Point. This evening with us is a distinguished gentleman who will be discussing Egyptian-American relations. This gentleman spent a good chunk of his life, or a good portion of his life, in the United States. He is Dr. Shukri Bahgat Ramadan, columnist in a leading newspaper there. A pleasure to have you with us. Pleasure. Media. Maybe I will start off with, we just we were just chatting before we started on yeah. air, and one thing that um, um, I thought maybe we should start off with is, you said you haven't been to Egypt in four years. Yes. And That's you true. said that you noticed that there is a difference. And sometimes when you see things every day, you don't see them as someone, you're the fresh eye, so to speak. And maybe this thing, I'm, I'm, as the, 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 the show started, your words were really ringing at the back of my head. I wanted to get your impression for someone that has been out of the country for a long time. How do you, what is the impression that you got when you came to Egypt after four years? Uh, first thing, I, you know, uh, I used to go to uh, my village from Cairo, my village in about two hours or three hours, sometimes. Depends mm. on the traffic. Mm. Can uh, I ask wh which part of? It's uh, in, uh, Minof in Minofia. Okay. In uh, Sukhkar Dahak, Bagor, Marcus of Bagor. So uh, I, I noticed that uh, it was very easy. They, 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 we took the road from uh, Nostra City to uh, to the, to their main, the free, like a freeway, and then uh, it took us uh, half an hour. Everything went very smoothly and. Uh, and I noticed a big change. It's not as complicated as it used to, to be. And then a, 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 a totally different road, uh, completely different from the uh, uh, Alexandria, Egypt, uh, Alexandria Cairo road, the old one. So I was impressed with the with the the, the traffic. Hmm. That uh, there's no there's no traffic. There was a, the very well. Uh, so you notice uh, um, an infrastructure in terms of roads that things were different. That's true. What else did you notice? How long have you been in Egypt this time? Only 15 days. Okay. And due to Corona, I didn't go to many places to tell you the truth. Mm. But uh, the, the places that I went to, uh, I was impressed. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, this show this evening is about Egyptian-American relations. Mm -hmm. Whenever a new president um, hits the White House, mm -hmm. um, Lots of people start to wonder, well, the new president, the new administration, how will it be different in its policies vis-a-vis -vis the, the previous one? Worth noting, Biden is not new to the White House because yes. he served in Obama's administration. Yeah. Well, maybe very... the question is, hmm. is Biden going to be different from Trump? And more importantly, is Biden going to be different from Obama? Because this is the administration, the last administration he really worked directly with. Well, I, I uh, since uh, I've been to the, to the United States since the Reagan times. Yes. So uh, I observed uh, these debates. Uh, you know, especially here in our country, in the, in the, in the, in the Middle East, but who's going to uh, win the presidency and how the, 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 the you know, the relations going to be different uh, from the previous, uh, previous uh, president. But I didn't see a, a big difference uh, at all mm. from Reagan until now. Mm. Uh, m passing through all these presidents, uh, it's all uh, almost the same, just different approach mm. to the same policy. Mm. And uh, so actually we were debating who is better and then Trump is better than, than, uh, than Biden or not. Uh, there is another thing. There is a, a, a Zionist lo lobby in America, as you know. Mm. Uh, and the, despite of the, what uh, Trump ha have done, for Israel, mm. uh, you know, moving to, you know, uh, 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 recognizing uh, Jerusalem as a capital, mm. uh, recognizing uh, uh, Golan Heights uh, to be a part of Israel, mm. and, uh, you know, uh, cutting the, the aid, the American aid to the uh, Palestinians, 
and all that stuff. He should be appreciated to them, and then they should vote for him or, mm. uh, or contribute to his we, You uh, expected the re-election of Trump into office because I of his policy? That, yeah, we, everybody expected that. Yes. But they had, they are very intelligent. They, they, they gave you a chance, they gave the president a chance mm. to do his best to serve Israel. Yes. And then put a bid on the other one, mm. a new one, mm. who can, because they're actually they're competing, who is going to be serving Israel, Israel more. more. Yes. So that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's competition, how to serve uh, the, that uh, Zionist state mm. uh, more than the other one. Um, as I was saying, is, do you expect policies vis-a-vis, -vis, for example, do you expect Egyptian-American relations to differ under the Biden administration? The, the American-Egyptian uh, relationship has been very stable, uh, especially the last 30 to 40 years. Uh, there hasn't been much change. There are some ups and downs and some differences. And, uh, but uh, we had uh, uh, always kept that relationship in, in a good shape and, uh, and very skillfully and very professionally mm -hmm. done in a way that uh, to keep a, 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 a framework uh, of uh, you know, understanding mm -hmm. between the two countries to uh, serve the interests, of e even to work within these differences. Yes. So regardless of uh, the daily details of the, the uh, Egyptian-American relationship, mm. uh, but you know, it's almost the same. It's not going to be a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that there are certain files in our relationship that we should be concentrating on? I mean, um, now the world is really suffering economically due to the pandemic. Um, do you think there are certain areas of cooperation um, Egypt is um, a leading country in this region. The United States, the superpower. Um, there are lots of expectations from both countries to not only serve their own interests, but to even serve the interests of the region, the region for, for example. Right. Yes. Um, the difference here between now and the past, let's say 10 years ago or from, you know, the time, Mubarak time, that Egypt is different, under a different leadership. Mm -hmm. That's a difference. Mm -hmm. So um, these are big challenges. There was, and then there is still big challenges uh, facing the, uh, the government here in Egypt. Uh, but the, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not the same. The influence, the Egyptian influence in the region is getting uh, better and getting more more uh, in, uh, 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 influence and stronger. It's, re it's stronger regaining influence. its position again. Regaining its position again. Yes. So with this uh, happening, uh, uh, and, and I expect even if the something happens in Ethiopia, I don't know what's going to happen, but we expect uh, uh, something major going to happen in there mm. uh, to, to, to stop the, the, the Ethiopian from, uh, you know, uh, doing what they're trying to do mm. to hurt Egypt. It's not going to happen, you know. Mm. Uh, the President Sisi uh, draw the line, the red line uh, in Libya and then in Ethiopia. And he's very serious in, in, mm. in, uh, in what he's saying. And there's no chance. Mm. So if it's not going to happen, he's going to act right away. It's action, it's not words. Mm. See, this is the difference. Mm. We're dealing with actions, not with words. Mm. And uh, so, uh, it, you know, if this happens, if, if they solve the, the problem with, the, with Ethiopia, uh, uh, it would be a big, big move for Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, but there's another thing uh, uh, along with that. Sudan, mm -hmm. there's a big competition in this area in the, Amer the African uh, horn, mm. that uh, between uh, the United States, uh, China, now China is in the picture, mm. because they have a, uh, a military base in, in uh, Djibouti. Yes. And that's the first one in this area. So, uh, 
And then, and then the, you know, the Soviet Union, the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, the, the Russia. Mm -hmm. So um, Russia is uh, now is uh, working on the uh, uh, Port Sudan, the, the port, military base, mm -hmm. and that's uh, it's going to be a, a huge thing in the, in the area, mm -hmm. big competition. Mm -hmm. So China and 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 Russia and from one side and the United States from the other side. I think there's, uh, there's going to be a shift in power happening soon. Yes. We're expecting that. Uh, and that will have its influence in the area. Shift eastward, is yes. that what you're saying? Uh, yes. That's More what towards saying. the east. Yes. Um, you raised the issue of the Zionist lobby. Mm -hmm. um, whenever that comes to mind, I always ask myself, what about the Arab lobby? As someone who's lived in the States for quite some, quite some time, we're always saying the Arab lobby, the Arab lobby, the Arab lobby. How far has the Arab lobby progressed? How far has the Arab rank and file united in a joint cause, which is basically to serve this part of the world? Well, Egypt started to have Egyptian lobby in, 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 uh, in the United States. Okay. And Egyptian that, that's lobby. Egyptian. Okay. And, uh, but w we're talk, talking about uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, United Emirates. I think we should have Arab lobby, mm. more, more Arabic lobby than, more than the Egyptian lobby or, or on, you know, individual mm. uh, on, for each country. Mm. It would be stronger. I, w I wish that they can do that. Mm. When we talk about the Egyptian lobby, um, there are generations far removed that are living in the United States. And um, one of the things that this country aims at um, achieving is uh, a sense, the, the um, enriching the sense of belonging of the generations, mm -hmm. the new generations especially, mm -hmm. that have been uprooted by their families and living and live abroad, that they have to feel a sense of belonging that you might um, be carrying an American passport, for example, but you still have Egyptian roots. Right. The sense of belonging, the sense of patriotism towards their roots. Mm -hmm. How is that happening? Or how are we progressing on that, in your opinion? How do you see the young generation's sense of belonging to Egypt? I, I would say it depends on the family, how they raise their children. Uh, I raise the ch my children in a way that is, you know, I kept that uh, tie between them and Egypt. They come here uh, almost every year, uh, every other year. Uh, they visit and they stay. And then I, they all, we all talk about Egypt over there. They, they are very proud of uh, what's happening right now, the progress that's happening, the development that's happening in Egypt, uh, the new cities, the, 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 uh, the, the new factories, the new uh, uh, development in Egypt. So. Uh, they are very happy, they are very proud of being uh, Egyptian Americans mm. and they are tied with the country. But I, you know, I think uh, uh, we Egyptians have that strong tie with, our, with Egypt mm. more than other, I, I don't know about the others, but mm -hmm. um, this one thing. Uh, so it depends on the family, how you raise your, your children. Mm. Uh, when they take positions in, in the country, they work as American and everything and uh, and they are very sincere, but uh, they still have, they are tied to, to Egypt very much. But uh, generally speaking, um, since 2013, for mm. example, mm. or 2000, even in 11, yes. do you see the, the, the sense of knowledge about Egypt for the generations that are uprooted? Yeah. Are there, is there more awareness, more um, um, involvement than before? The accomplishments of the Egyptian government mm. during the past seven years, it's, it's, it has been uh, tremendous. Mm. And it influenced these young, uh, you know, teenagers and, and young generations mm. to, uh, you know, to real, you were hearing different mm. stories from the other, uh, like, uh, you know, Arabs in the Arab community about Egypt, about the, the government. But they have seen that. Mm. They have seen the, the, the last thing, uh, the, the movement of the, moving the mummies, 
the, the, the parade. He made him very, very proud of Egypt and, uh, uh, and, and all the Arabs, by the way, in the United States, they were very impressed with that. Even though they, they, said, they, they, they had a different opinion uh, from the President Sisi, you mm -hmm. know, but they were, they were like, you know, uh, uh, very impressed with that. He said, you know, it, it's, it's a big honor mm -hmm. you know, to, the, to, to, to any, any Arab that to, to have, uh, you know, to see that, what, what's happening. See how Egypt is pro progressing and how, the, you know, it has been developed. It, it's very, very uh, amazing. Um, how, in your opinion, as someone living abroad, how can, what does Egypt need to do more to engage further the coming generation? Uh, unfortunately, in the United States, the, 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 uh, the Arab community Attached mostly to the ma the to the uh, to the mosques, and the mosques are influenced by the uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. That's a negative uh, influence. You have a negative influence on the on the young uh, mm -hmm. generations. Mm -hmm. But now, with the, like I said, with the news coming uh, out and the the progress that we see in Egypt. Uh, the changes and the, the relationship between like Tunis, the Tunisian president when he came to Egypt, yes. uh, it, it made a, a big difference. Hmm. You know, it convinces this generation that what's hap what we, are, we are on the right track. Hmm. We, we are on the right track. Hmm. The, other way, the other way wrong. You're a columnist in the Arab World News. Yes. Um, what kind of, do you write things to um, make Americans aware of what's going on in this part of the world? No, I'm or talking to the uh, Arab community. To the Arab community. About the, what's happening in our area, mm -hmm. in the Middle East. What's the feedback that you get? I mean, in other words, mm. especially the young people, they have the social media, they have your column, for example, or your paper, mm -hmm. and they have the local networks. And, and uh, how, how do you shift the attention? And I'll, I'll hold you here. Um, um, I'll hold that question for a minute. Uh, first, we're going to go to um, a phone intervention with, with us uh, on the line is His Excellency Ambassador, Ambassador Hassan Haridi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Your Excellency, can you hear us? Yes, madam. Uh, sir, Egyptian American relations, how do you see them progressing right now? Um, we have a new government in office, we have lots of economic and political um, um, happenings, to put it diplomatically. How, how do you see us moving forward? Well, I guess the uh, Egyptian-American relations for the past uh, four decades uh, have been on, uh, on the right uh, path forward. Of course, there uh, have been ups and downs in, this, uh, in these relations. But this is only normal. And of course, we, when we uh, talk about Egyptian-American relations, uh, of course, we have to distinguish between two things. Uh, the first is the strategic, the common strategic interests between the two countries since we signed the peace, ever since we have signed the peace treaty with Israel back in 1979. And then, uh, the ups and downs of these relations with various uh, and successive American administrations, either Democrats or Republicans. Mm. On the other hand, when we speak about the, the bilateral relations between Cairo and Washington, we have to take into account also the role that the American Congress plays uh, to a certain extent in shaping and uh, impacting these uh, relations. Mm. Add to that, add to that, uh, the leading American uh, media, uh, particularly the, uh, the uh, New York Times, the Washington Post, the Christian Science America, uh, the Wall Street Journal, of course they have, they have their impact on the, uh, the impressions that the American decision makers have of Egyptian policies 
uh, from time to time. So I, I agree, but uh, to some it, I, I guess the relations are stable, uh, are uh, improving, if I may use this uh, word, and uh, we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be uh, shy from uh, talking with our American friends or American partners about uh, our concerns vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, certain policies, uh, particularly when we deal with the issue and the question of human rights and uh, mm -hmm. and public uh, liberties. So, so we, we shouldn't be sensitive. We should not feel sensitive. Mm -hmm. discussing these things with the American administration or with the American media. Uh, we are open, we are transparent, and we have nothing to, 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 to hide or to fear for that matter. Um, um, the, once um, um, President Biden came to office, um, two questions raised themselves. Is he going to be following the agenda that was set with the Obama administration or is he continuing the Trump administration's agenda? In your opinion, where does he fall? Well, in, in, in this, uh, the United States of America has a global strategy. And whether we speak about uh, former President Obama or President Trump or President Biden, uh, these administrations or future administrations would stick to this global strategy. The differences between one administration and another may fall in the uh, in, in, in tactics, in approach, in the language they uh, they use uh, in analyzing or in approaching uh, events and developments in the Middle East in general and in Egypt in particular. Having said that, having said that, I guess, uh, as I said earlier, uh, the United States and Egypt uh, have had uh, common strategic interests uh, from 1979 on. And my personal belief is that uh, nothing changed, uh, nothing changed. And uh, we have to uh, operate and we have to manage mm -hmm. uh, our part uh, of of, of, in this in this bilateral relation uh, in a very cool manner, uh, in a very studied manner, uh, without being oversensitive of any between comments criticism that uh, may come from Washington vis-a-vis -vis the human rights records. So I guess I'm, I'm, I'm always optimistic about Egyptian-American relations, regardless of who is the president and whether this is a Republican or a Democrat, Democrat, a Democrat uh, administration. Um, uh, sir, um, another issue um, uh, that raises itself, which is we have a lot of um, boiling points in our backyard here in, in this part of the world. Uh, will we see eye to eye on certain strategic um, decisions that need to be taken vis-a-vis uh, -vis a lot of issues here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the uh, Middle East, uh, peace, of course, we, we see eye to eye. Uh, uh, luckily, the Biden administration uh, has uh, revived the two-state solution once again. Uh, and we are uh, fortunate, uh, fortunate in this regard. And then you have, of course, the uh, Iranian, Iranian file, particularly uh, Iran acquiring a nuclear, a nuclear device or a nuclear weapon. We see eye to eye on this uh, issue. Fighting terrorism also, this is a third, a third uh, topic uh, of uh, mutual concern and mutual interest. And I guess there is an agreement uh, between the two countries on uh, fighting terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the uh, security of the uh, Gulf region and the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. These are strategic uh, issues, strategic topics, where Washington and Cairo see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Hassan Ridi, thank you very much for joining us on To The Point uh, and wish you a very uh, pleasant evening. Um, uh, Dr. Shukri, uh, we were saying what you're writing, 
versus uh, what the social media is writing versus what the local the messages in the local media how um, um, do, does the receptor especially the young people how do they how can we influence uh, them how can we make sure that they have the correct information especially since you're saying you're writing in arabic and most of them really are not even familiar with uh, the language that's the key the thing uh, uh, what who who reads for me uh, the, the young the uh, older generations mm. uh, uh, not many young people read for me however uh, I have followers on Facebook and the, you know some social uh, the you know Twitter and, mm -hmm. uh, and we discuss o over the, the social media also the mm. uh, situations in the Middle East mm. and we uh, the, the good thing is uh, you know what we're talking about is uh, it, there's a lot of uh, you know stereotypes and a lot of uh, misinformation happening and we try to correct that mm. and uh, w w the good thing uh, uh, like I said uh, the events uh, comes and, and proves that we were right and 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 and, and prove to the young, these young generations to give them the good feedback uh, that, uh, that the uh, the correct information and they get the right uh, knowledge mm -hmm. um, how can we um, create a stronger um, lobby of young Arabs abroad and I'm not talking just in the United States I'm talking um, young people that have been uprooted worldwide that feel a sense of belonging to this part of the world feel that um, one day they want to come and work here one day they want to um, they're well educated for example they know how they want to come and apply um, in other words We've had um, um, scientists like uh, Dr. Farouk al uh, for example, like Dr. Magdi Aoub and Dr. Zouil. I mean, so many different uh, uh, people in various fields, and they never forgot their roots. They right. came back, mm -hmm. and they wanted to contribute to the development. Right. I'm talking about the young generation that maybe have a disadvantage over the the people I mentioned is that they were probably born abroad. They've mm. lived all their life abroad. Right. But one day, we want them to feel that a part of you is here. You should come and contribute here. You should act as a lobbying tool for this part of the world. Uh, the, the development that's happening in Egypt right now attracts many people uh, for, for investment you know, investors to come to Egypt from all over the world uh, and 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 the, the, the by the time the, the, the progress happening and uh, the M the influence of Egypt becomes bigger and bigger I think this you know uh, draw the attention to Egypt as a, 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 a place for uh, opportunity opportunity for young people to come to Egypt as it used to in the past remember uh, you know uh, at certain times uh, there were people coming from Italy to work in Egypt and and Greece and all the you know other countries because there was there were a lot of opportunities happening in Egypt uh, development uh, uh, happening, uh, tremendous development happening here, and then I, th I, I, I believe that this is going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. and we, we are working on this, and uh, uh, like I said, the, the, I draw the, 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 the example of the, uh, uh, the, the, the mommy, the movement of the mummies to the, yes. the new place. Uh, it really attracted a lot, many people. Mm -hmm. From, from all over the world mm -hmm. and they made uh, our youth uh, very proud of their country. Uh, proud enough to feel that what they saw on the TV screens, they want to come and see in person. It was real. It, 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 it wasn't fake. The, the, these were, this is real scenes. Mm -hmm. And they were very impressed. It's like a Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It was very professionally done. You've seen the, the, the modern uh, face of Egypt, not only the ancient face. Mm -hmm. So it was very impressive um, and promising. Um, how we have with us um, on the phone, uh, Dr. Uh, Tamer Abdelmena Amradi, head of the economics department at Ain Shams University. Um, Dr. Tamer, can you hear us? 
Uh, yes, I hear you well. Yes. Uh, so we're talking about the coming phase in Egyptian-American relations from an economic perspective. Um, how do you see um, um, us uh, fostering further economic cooperation in the future? There are always opportunities for cooperation, especially with the changing environment in Egypt, uh, the rapid in, uh, investment in infrastructure, our new cities. Uh, there are areas to cooperate in, um, in particularly energy sector, uh, in the digital economy part, and of course always in, in industry and other services. Mm -hmm. um, there has never been a better timing uh, to be uh, attracting investment with such rapid transformation. So I think it, uh, there are a great deal of opportunities that can be heavily relied on for the next phase of cooperation. Mm -hmm. Um, what sectors do you think um, um, we can um, cooperate in in the coming future? Well, definitely always want to concentrate on <clears throat> areas that are uh, the most basic trends uh, in industry in this coming phase. Areas of communications and making of mobile phones, processors, uh, and other things in which countries like the United States rely heavily on manufacturing in China. Uh, we can have a share of that in Egypt with the changing environment that's going on. But there is also a great deal of technology needed in the area of digital uh, economy and digital services and the digital transformation carried out in Egypt. Uh, there is always, of course, uh, a much needed uh, help and technology in the health sector. And cooperation with the United States in the health sector have been going on for years. Uh, but not with, uh, with the aspiration that probably the Egyptian health sector is looking for. Uh, it has been uh, transforming, uh, improving, and it requires a whole lot of uh, more capital and more expertise to modernize. Uh, those are all uh, viable opportunities that can be explored. Mm -hmm. uh, can um, the economic um, uh, portfolio um, push forth certain political cooperation in the future, in your opinion? Yes, of course. You know, uh, uh, the history of U.S. Egypt economic cooperation is, is, is rather old now, since the, the early 1970s. Uh, and uh, usually, you know, this is the time in which countries cooperate. And this is the global economy that we live in. Uh, Egypt and the United States are both members, of course, of the, of the World Trade Organization. And uh, there has been uh, talks uh, many years ago about uh, 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 Egyptian and American uh, free trade agreement of sort. Mm -hmm. And uh, history teaches us that this is very uh, possible. Uh, countries like Mexico have established a very successful trade, uh, free trade agreement with the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, there, is a, there are always pros and cons in such an agreement, but there are always Usually the, the pros are way more uh, uh, than the cons, and uh, developing nations end up being the biggest winners out of such cooperation. Uh, I guess that the next phase in the U.S.-Egyptian relation uh, have a whole lot of opportunity in, in the coming years. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Temer Rodi, thank you very much for your fruitful input. Um, uh, Dr. Shukri, um, uh, one of um, um, the issues that uh, we also want to address, and that is... Um, in the past, there were lots of stereotypes about this part of the world, about Egypt, about Islam, and so forth and so on. Um, a misinformed uh, uh, public opinion overseas about the real essence of our religion, our countries, our culture. Uh, do you see this? Um, being countered? Do you see we're doing enough to change this? Uh, is there um, enough um, um, tools abroad even, uh, such as your um, um, paper, for example, to start to um, change this, to um, counter the stereotypes, to put proper um, um, images in place, especially in the minds of the future generations? Uh, it's not going to be by by talking or by uh, you know like newspapers and and, and uh, columns uh, written uh, written columns. Uh, uh, it would be more uh, like actions. Uh, w what I mean by actions is like we uh, in Egypt 
especially I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Egypt, uh, we have, we have uh, real uh, you know, peace between the, the people in Egypt and, the, and, and uh, you know, we don't have these problems that we, we hear about in other countries, thank mm. God, that we don't have that. Uh, as far as the you know uh, religion and the differences and the, um, mm. but but uh, uh, also uh, the, the media has a, a big part in this mm. and, and the, the local talking about the local media and the media that we uh, take to the the, the world like this we need to, we need to th yes we need to talk to the people uh, in the world w with their languages English French and the other languages, so we can, uh, they can, de you know, uh, realize that the, you know, what's happening. Actually, mm -hmm. you know the facts, not the stereotypes. Yes. Uh, and also uh, try to uh, to face uh, the stereotypes that's coming from the other side, even from the Egyptians uh, that belong to the Muslim mm -hmm. Brotherhood, mm -hmm. and the other uh, Arabs that belong to that uh, that gr you know uh, terrorist group. Mm. So the the the, uh, the unfortunately the the they are what big part of that problem you know yes yes so they're they're talking about the human rights like the terrorist rights as if the the victims of the terrorism are they don't have no rights mm -hmm. so uh, yeah. the people the average layman in the United States for right. example is he aware of the two different rights is he seeing what those terrorist groups are doing in our part of the world. That's Not just in our part of the world, I mean worldwide, but uh. is he or she aware of the magnitude of the hatred, the aggression that innocent people are being um, um, subdued to by those people, by those yeah. organizations, or by those um, ideologies? They planted the seed over there that any uh, t terrorist act happens if any event happens, they always accuse the so-called Islamists. So it goes like that automatically. So they have that planted in their mind, unfortunately. We need to, to, to change this mind, not from them. They, 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 they act according to what they receive from the media. Yes. But our media, what's the role of our media here? Hmm. To uh, send the messages across overseas yes to tell them you know that's not right mm -hmm. to give them the truth mm -hmm. give them the facts mm -hmm. so that's uh, you know we need to to work from here mm -hmm. on that dr shukri ramadan uh, thank you very much for joining us this evening our time is up i'd like to thank you the, My pleasure. Uh, the viewers for joining for uh, your time this evening wishing you a very pleasant evening and good night thank you so much thank you